I'm freezing. I'm really freezing. Well, you do. If you're freezing in here with that thing, you should get your money back. No, you see, Johnny, if I really put the coat on, then I would be steaming. Then I get it all overheated. And when I go out, I'd probably get a cold. You know, I think I have low blood sugar. I don't get it. Well, that's... See, that's the reason why I'm cold. Now, you get low blood sugar, and you don't eat anything. The level of the blood sugar goes way down. Mm -hmm. And then you get, uh... You get cold, I, I guess. I think it's because uh, Roger and I ordered dinner, and then we didn't have a chance to eat it. Oh. I mean, when the hospital called you? Mm, yeah. Uh, Dee, there's a candy machine down the hall. I'll give you a couple of quarters. You get yourself some candy. Oh, no, that stuff is so junky, it's disgusting. Well, have you always... You know, Faith is in shock. Johnny, suppose I go into shock. <laughs> no, that's a crazy idea. It's just something that popped into my head. Anyway, Roger and I uh, finished our caviar. Oh, caviar is it, huh? Yeah. It's the only fish that I don't hate. Oh, I love the pink kind. It's delicious. But not as good as tuna fish. Tuna fish? Huh. How could you compare the two? I mean, they're so different. I mean, you'd never mix caviar with mayonnaise. I mean, the, the, the taste is just, you know, it... You know how caviar tastes. You're just teasing me, aren't you? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm upset about Tom and Faith, but basically, I'm in a pretty good mood tonight. Commodity's doing well, huh? Johnny, did Maeve tell you what I did? Yeah, she said, uh, you called your broker when the tea tasted bitter. When Maeve's tea tasted bitter. See, right there and then, I knew it was time to sell. So I called up Mr. Grimley, and tomorrow he's going to diversify. Right now, I got $43,000 in cash available. Do you realize I could stuff that all in a pillow? I could sleep on it? Well, you've done very well for yourself, Dee. You should be proud. I am. I really am. I think I have almost everything I want in the whole world. But, you know, things won't really be perfect until little John comes to live with me. Johnny? Oh, Johnny, I'm sorry. Look, uh, I don't want you to be sad. You've been so wonderful to him, but I am his mother, and I think I'm able to raise him now. You have a point, Dee. You'll always see him. I mean, I'll always bring him over there. And don't worry, Roger's not going to adopt him. I mean, I know Seneca has adopted Edmund, and that must make you feel awful. Yeah, well, we just found out tonight. Yeah. Really? When did you find out? Oh, uh, no, not too long ago. As a matter of fact, it wasn't long at all. You know, Johnny, I mean, you're losing one grandchild, but uh, you're not, you're not going to lose, you're not going to lose mine, I promise you. I mean, little Johnny just, he just loves you too All much. right, now it so happens that Edmund is at our house right this minute. That's why Maeve can't be here. Well, it's probably because Jill can't get married because after Because Jill said in no uncertain terms she wants us to stay close to Edmund. Really? Yes. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad. I mean, I think Edmund needs you and Maeve. I really do, and I think... See, Johnny, I think you have some beautiful things to offer a grandchild. And the better they know you, the better people that they turn out to be. I really believe that. I really do. I sincerely hope so. I know so. Johnny? Johnny, I may not be Orion anymore, but I admire all of you. And um, I just want you to know I'm going to share a little John with Frank 50-50. Roger might be my husband, but Frank is little John's father and a father to be proud of. Well, if I can't hear that from Seneca, it's nice to hear it from you. Thank you.